Good afternoon, class. We will be continuing with our lecture on Chapter 4, the uh, different modes of extinguishment of obligations. Our uh, source material, once again, will be um, obligations and contracts by De Leon and De Leon Jr. Uh, so we will continue with uh, Section 2, uh, extinguishment of obligations due to loss of the thing due. So anyway, um, there is loss in real obligations. Um, when, number one, uh, ito, pinag-aralan natin sa 1189, when the object perishes or it is destroyed physically. So, naglako siya or nasira siya. So, obviously, the object can, cannot be delivered anymore kasi nga naglaho, nasira. Number two, it goes out of commerce, meaning hindi na siya maibenta. It can no longer be the subject of uh, transactions. Naging illegal na siya, etc., etc. Yun, yun ang goes out of commerce. Kung halimbawa, ngayon, ang... Um, ang ang uh, herbal medicine sabi na lang natin uh, uh, pwede pa rin siyang bilhin ngayon pero kung halimbawa uh, sinabi ng uh, ng uh, nagkaroon tayo ng patas na bawal nang bumili ng mga uh, herbal medicines kasi uh, hindi sila FDA approved etc kung ano-ano pang mga dahilan remember yung mga products na yan they uh, will go out of commerce so hindi na sila pwedeng maging subject matter ng mga valid transactions uh, kasi void na yung object mo doon. Now, um, what else? When it disappears in such a way that its existence is unknown or it cannot be recovered, hindi mo na malaman kung nasan siya, kung nadyan pa siya, or wala na siya, nag exist or hindi. And or kung alam mo naman kung nasan siya, but it cannot be recovered, still considered as lost. Now, let us say, class, meron kang um, kwintas, parang sa Titanic, ano? nasa ilalim siya ng dagat. Alam natin na nasa dagat siya, yes, but we cannot recover it anymore. So, again, this is a loss. So, remember the general rule in case of uh, real obligation is that an obligation is extinguished uh, due to loss of the object. So, that is the general rule. Loss of the thing will extinguish um, real obligations. So, yan ang tandaan natin. But of course, meron tayong mga certain rules dyan. The obligation is to deliver a specific or determinate thing because remember, ang specific or determinate object, nag-iisa lang yan. So, pagka nawala yan, wala nang kamukayan and there is uh, no way to deliver it anymore. Remember, they are defined by their uniqueness. So, if they are uh, lost, wala na tayong i-deliver, obligation is extinguished. Number two, loss of the thing occurs without the fault of the debtor. So, wala nang grounds for liability, etc. Uh, like, um, fault, uh, tapos yung sa susunod, debtor is not guilty of legal delay. So, kung walang uh, dolo, wala rin culpa, and the other grounds for liability, remember class, that the obligation will be extinguished. Yan. So, anyway, uh, please take note also, the, in some cases, there are obviously exceptions to the general rule. So, here, uh, sa mga exceptions, the obligation to deliver the specific thing is obviously extinguished. Kasi nga, hindi mo na madideliver yung specific na object na yan. Extinguished. But, remember, the said obligation is converted into a monetary obligation to pay for damages. So, pera-pera na lang ang usapan because you cannot anymore deliver the thing. Now, um, number one, uh, when the law provides, so, law na ang nagsabi eh. Wala ka lang magagawa dyan, sabi nga ng law. So, if the debtor is guilty of... Um, Yung grounds for liability, uh, culpa, dolo, uh, mora, and also contravention of the uh, agreement of the parties. Remember that uh, even if the loss is by a fortuitous event, kahit na hindi pa kasalanan ng... Obviously, kung kasalanan ng debtor, eh, dagdag mo pa yung mga grounds for liability, liable talaga yung debtor. Pero ito, kahit na ang loss is by a fortuitous event, debtor is still uh, liable because they uh, nag-aaray si mga grounds for liability. Number two, debtor is in bad faith. He, when he has promised to deliver the same specific thing to two or more persons who do not have the same interest. So, in 1165, we have already discussed this. Um, debtor promised to give uh, a specific vote to uh, A. Debtor also promised to give a specific vote to B. Same uh, vote, but um, delivered to be delivered to persons with different interests. Now, remember, class, that if this vote is lost by a fortuitous event, and obviously, kung fault ng debtor, 
needless to say, liable on debtor. But um, uh, here, if, let us say it is lost by a 48 event, remember class debtor is liable not only to A but also to B because he is in bad faith, he has promised to deliver the same specific object to uh, persons who do not have the same interest. If the obligation arises from a crime, obviously, debtor is uh, liable. Kung hindi niya ninakaw yan, etc., etc., hindi sana mawawala yan, kasalanan pa rin niya dahil siya ay magnanakaw, he has to uh, pay. Obligation is converted into a monetary obligation to pay for damages. Remember yung uh, scope ng civil liability, restitution is the first one. So, kailangan mong ibalik yung kalabaw na ninakaw mo. Yun ang lagi kong example dyan. So, anyway, if this kalabaw is destroyed by a fortuitous event, even if it is not your fault, because uh, remember, uh, the obligation to uh, return yung uh, kalabaw na yan arises from a crime, restitution, uh, remember class that you will still be liable. Yung kalabaw, ang babayaran mo na lang dyan is yung monetary value niya. What else? Um, thing to be delivered is generic in accordance with the doctrine genus non comparit. So, kung asukal yan, hindi nawawala ang asukal. A uh, very good example of uh, generic objects or money. So, um, money is a generic object. So, obviously, ay, ma'am slash sir, nawala yung pera, ganito, ganito, kinain ng, ano, ng anay, lumubog na ganito, lumubog sa kumunoy, etc. Wala akong pakailangan ng class. Remember, money is generic, kailangan nyo pa rin bayaran yan. So, what else? Um, number five, borrower had lent a thing to another person who is not a member of his own household. So, ito yung mga nanghiram ng bagay. Nanghiram kayo ng t-shirt, tapos anong ginawa nyo? Pinahiram nyo pa sa iba. So, um, nag, nanghiram kayo ng t-shirt, tapos yung t-shirt na hiniram nyo, pinahiram nyo pa sa kapitbahay nyo, hindi maganda ugali yan, class. Pagka pinahiram nyo, ay eh, pagkahiniram nyo, huwag nyo nang ipapahiram. Hindi magandang ugali yon So, anyway, eh, syempre, makapal ka, ba So, pinahiram mo pa sa kapitbahay mo yung t-shirt na hiniram mo. Hiniram mo na nga, pero hiram pa. So, anyway, turn off, no? So, anyway, itong t-shirt na to is lost by a 42 event. Ikaw, liable ka pa rin. Bakit? Kasi nga, you are not supposed to lend a thing that you have borrowed. Hindi naman sa'yo, pakahiram mo. So, anyway, um, if the thing loaned is uh, delivered with appraisal of value, unless there is stipulation accepting borrower for responsibility. So, kung ang bagay na pinahiram, binigay sa'yo yung appraisal, uh, sinabi kung magkano siya. Uh, obviously, um, in case of loss by uh, 40 to 7, remember that the debtor is still liable to deliver the value of the uh, object unless it is otherwise stipulated. But else, pay in solution in debity. So, remember in solution in debity, there is mistake in payment. The payee, yung pinagbigyan ng pera, has no right to receive uh, yung thing. Now, um, kung yung payee na yan is in bad faith, alam naman niya hindi siya entitled, pero tinanggap pa rin niya. If this object is lost by a fortuitous event, remember, payee is still uh, liable. Because remember, your payee will become your debtor as to the return of the um, object which was delivered by mistake. So, if the object which was delivered by mistake, which is in possession of the payee slash debtor, nawala by a fortuitous event, payee slash debtor is still a liable, converted into a monetary obligation. Number two, if the stipulation provides, obviously this is by agreement. So, parties agree that debtor is liable even if the loss is by a fortuitous event. So, yun ang kanilang rule, binding force of contract. contracts, remember. What else? Um, when the nature of the obligation requires the assumption of risk. So, uh, again, i-discuss ko na to, uh, in case of insurance contracts. So, sa insurance contracts, remember, uh, pagka hindi nangyari yung thing insured against, remember, walang liability. Pero pagka nangyari yun, um, dun magkakaroon ng liability. Like, again, fire insurance. So, pagka hindi nasunog ang bahay, walang liability. Uh, pero pagka nasunog, uh, mayroong uh, liability yung insurer. So, baliktad ito, di ba? Remember, pagka nangyari yung 42 event, general rule, wala talagang liability kasi nga 42 event. But here, uh, baliktad siya because uh, ang binabayaran talaga dito, kaya nagbabayad ka ng insurance is because of the risk na pwedeng mangyari. So, doctrine of created uh, risk. So, please take note class that the lost here as occur after the obligation has been uh, constituted. So, if loss is prior to the obligation, uh, obligation is uh, void because there is no subject matter. Anyway, uh, take note of that. Um, 
yes, um, 12.63 is the effect of loss of generic things. So, um, generic thing, genus don't compare it, remember, uh, ob obligation will uh, remain. It will subsist S U B S I S P S. S U B S I S S I sub nabuluhan na tuloy ako subsist so anyway obligation will remain para hindi na ako mahirapan so um uh, this is based on the doctrine that uh, genus never perishes so if a generic object is lost again class um, palitan nyo lang ng isa pang generic object uh, of the same kind now uh, remember again to apply the rule of average in case or rule of medium in case hindi pinag-usapan yung um uh quality ng generic object debtor cannot demand i cannot deliver inferior creditor cannot demand superior a quality object now obviously there are exceptions to the general rule the exception is in case of a delimited generic object so on generic uh, object here is delimited example class 50 kilos of sugar from my 2020 harvest sa aking um uh, plantation or sa aking sugar cane fields yan so kung halimbawa um, nawala lahat ng uh, yung um, inaning sugar cane dun sa yung sugar cane farm or hindi ko kasi alam ang tawag dun so anyway um, if all of the harvest from your farm is completely destroyed remember class that the obligation is uh, extinguished kasi nga dinelimit mo siya ano yung delimitation is yung lahat ng uh, harvest from 2020 lamang. So, even if generic, because it is delimited, obligation is extinguished. What else if there is, if the generic thing is a segregated generic thing, so it has already been segregated, set aside, in which case it has become specific. So, halimbawa, warehouse, meron tayong uh, uh, maraming asukal na naman, sako ng asukal, tapos sabi mo, lahat ng sako ng asukal sa a second floor uh, kay ano na yan uh, kay X na yan so nasunog yung uh, warehouse lahat ng wala nyo kung ano nasunog lahat ng sako ng asukal sa second floor nasunog because remember asukal is again um, generic pero because it is already segregated hiniwalay mo na eh lahat ng nasa second floor ito na kay ano kay etc kay X the uh, creditor so remember here class that the obligation is extinguished because yung pagsesegregate mo or paghiwalay mo yung generic object uh, made yung uh, generic specific yeah so anyway uh, remember that uh, what else um, loss in real obligations include also partial loss so 1264 talks about partial loss only a portion of the thing is lost or uh, destroyed so suffers depreciation or deterioration in personal partial loss is equivalent to difficulty in performance um, Courts will determine whether or not, uh, in case na hindi nag-agree mga parties, ha, so papasok na si court, um, whether or not under the circumstances, partial loss is um, a substantial loss as to extinguish the entire obligation. So the example in your book is very, um, um, ano ba yan? very, um, I cannot think of a better example. That's what I, I want to say. So anyway, uh, horse, the, that is the example in your book. So, ang kabayo na, uh, let us say, pangkarera ang binibili mong kabayo. Tapos yung kabayo na puto lang pa, ah, hindi naman na, hindi naman na wala yung buong body niya, obviously. So, here, partial loss ito. But uh, remember, this is uh, substantial. In, in this case, plus remember, partial loss is equivalent to a complete loss. Kasi hindi mo na siya pwedeng ipangkarera. So, yun ang tandaan nyo sa uh, partial loss. Now, if the purpose for the, um, uh, ano, um, ang kabayo is yung kakainin mo lang ganyan, so partial loss is uh, not, cannot be equated to complete loss. So, uh, in some cases nga, loss here may be insignificant. So, judi judicial determination is um, uh, needed. Yeah. So, anyway, um, what else do you have to remember? Um, in case of uh, loss, remember the presumption is that it is the fault of the uh, debtor if the object is in possession of the debtor. So here what you have to remember in class is pagka nawala yung object and it is in the uh, possession of the debtor, the presumption is that the debtor who has custody and care of the thing 
uh, siya ang may kasalanan nung uh, loss. So, presumption yon. So, but remember also that this presumption is disputable. So, pwedeng patunayan ng Beto otherwise na hindi talaga siya ang may kasalanan uh, noong uh, loss. Um, uh, but remember, the burden of proof here is not uh, on the creditor. The debtor has to prove na hindi nag-a-apply yung uh, presumption. So, the debtor has to dis disprove the disputable presumption. Uh, so, the presumption is not applicable, obviously, in case of um, natural calamities or fortuitous event. So, hindi na mag-a-apply. Siyempre, kung may fortuitous event, obviously, hindi na magkasara ng debtor yan. So, walang presumption na ganun. In case of personal obligations naman, uh, loss here is equated to impossibility of performance. So, hindi mo na siya ma-perform. Kaya, uh, uh, the service is impossible to perform. Yun ang loss in personal obligations. So, remember, uh, class in 1266, um, debtor will be released uh, from the obligation if the service has become legally or physically impossible without the fault of a said debtor. So anyway, physical impossibility will occur in uh, personal uh, obligations, purely personal obligations. So uh, so here, personal qualifications are involved. Because remember, in personal obligations, pagka hindi na magawa ng debtor yan, pwede mo namang ipagawas, pwede mo namang gawin uh, on your own at the debtor's expense plus damages. Or pwede mong ipagawa sa third person as the de at the debtor's expense plus damages. But remember, if it involves purely personal qualifications na hindi mo na maipagawa sa iba, um, and this uh, debtor dies or becomes physically uh, incapacitated to perform the obligation na hindi niya kasalanan, the obligation is, remember, extinguished. So, alibawa, by accident, yung, yung sinasabi ko sa inyong pintor kanina, so, ay, no, no, nung diniscuss ko yun, so yung pintor na to, um, not his fault, bigla naputol yung kamay niya. And remember, yung personal qualifications ang uh, yung motivating factor kung bakit mo siya kinuha. The obligation here is extinguished because hindi naman kasalanan yung pintor na naputol yung kanyang uh, kamay kaya hindi niya mapaint yung, yung uh, naked portrait. I think that is the example uh, I gave in class. So anyway, um, uh, so here remember class that the obligor is not required to pay for damages. Anyway, this is not his fault. Uh, what else? In case of legal impossibility, when the obligation cannot be performed because it is rendered impossible by provision of law, although physically possible to perform. So it may be direct, prohibited by law, or indirect uh, as when the debtor is required to enter into military trap. So hindi na pwedeng i-perform yan. So legal impossibility. So anyway, um, pwede nung una, pero bigla it became legally impossible. So yun naman ang kailangan yung tandaan sa mga impossibility. Eh. Nung una pwede siyang gawin, but uh, later on, it becomes impossible. Kasi kung una pa lang hindi na pwedeng gawin, the obligation is void for having an impossible object. But here, um, obligation is possible to perform, but later on, hindi na siya possible to perform. Because physically, it became, became impossible. Legally, it became impossible. Eh, kasi bigla, nagkaroon ng law, bawal na magpintura ng mga naked portrait, ganyan. So, Bawal na. There is a direct, um, uh, directly prohibited by uh, law. So remember here, class, that legal impossibility will once again extinguish that obligation. Uh, moral impossibility or impracticability, the service has become uh, so difficult as to be manifestly beyond the contemplation of, the, of both parties due to change in certain uh, conditions. So we will discuss the, that later on. This is a very important concept. Um, yun namang subjective impossibility act is subjectively impossible for the debtor himself but otherwise possible for all others uh, usually yung mga obligation na subjectively impossible are uh, they subsist unless personal considerations are uh, involved so usually ang example nyan uh, alimbawa um, alimbawa lang ako sa uh, pintor ka tapos uh, Okay lang sa'yo mag-paint na, so debtor ka, no, as to painting a portrait. So, okay lang sa'yo mag-paint ng mga um, naked portrait ng mga kung sino-sinong tao. Pero nung gusto mong magpa-paint ng naked portrait yung anak mo, awkward, di ba? So, hindi mo kayang gawin. So, here the act is subjectively impossible for this debtor, but uh, otherwise objectively possible for uh, 
all others yan so hindi with respect to yung daughter niya as a subject hindi kaya yung perform ng deto but uh, possible for all others so usually these obligations subsist yan yan ang mahirap eh unless personal considerations are involved anyway mag-usap na lang sila magbaka na lang sila di ba kaka-disturb so anyway um effect of loss in personal obligations or impossibility of performance so pagkadating sa personal impossibility of performance yun ang equated as a uh, loss so remember debtor in personal obligations will be released from the obligation if there is legal or physical impossibility and there is no fault on the part of the debtor so impossibility must take place after the obligation has been uh, constituted katulad doon na nga sinabi ko it, it is impossible for from the very beginning obligation is void there is no obligation to extinguish kasi hindi naman nag-exist in the first place so partial impossibility um the courts shall determine whether the circumstances under the circumstances whether partial impossibility is so important as to distinguish the obligation as same rule as in 12 uh, 64 so let's talk about uh, moral impossibility so sinasa sinabi ko sa inyo to we will uh, skip to it so yung more uh, ngayon we will discuss na natin so yung moral impossibility general rule is that it releases the uh, debtor from the obligation so when there is a moral impossibility, remember, uh, debtor may be released in full or in part by the court. Um, uh, remember here, class, that there is an element, sabi nga dito, element of the unforeseen or fortuitous event in the uh, situation. So, um, this will apply not only to personal obligations, but also to uh, real obligations. So, let us say, class, uh, magpipintura ka ng bahay. So, nung nagpintura ka ng bahay, um, let us say, magpipintura ka ng bahay sa, um, saan ba? Sa, let us say, sa Baguio. Baguio na lang. So, doon ka magpipintura ng bahay sa Baguio. So, at the time of constitution of, of the obligation as the debtor, madaling pumunta sa Baguio, madaling magpintura ng bahay. So, wala kang problema doon, di ba? But uh, remember here, class, that there is a supervening event. So let us say, yung supervening event is that uh, nagkaroon ng uh, landslide. So nagkaroon ng landslide sa lahat ng uh, roads leading to Baguio. Miguel yan, sarado ng landslide. Kenan Road, sarado ng landslide. Uh, Marcos Highway, sarado ng landslide. So there's no way to uh, get there. Let us say, tumagal ito ng um, three months, ganyan. So hindi ka makapunta, debt or you cannot perform the uh, obligation. Uh, remember here, class, that the debtor may be released from the uh, obligation because of moral impossibility. So, bakit? Kasi yung supervening event, it made it impossible for the part, for the debtor to perform the obligation. So, um, uh, remember here the requisites of um, moral impossibility. The service must become so difficult. Sobrang naging mahirap siya that it was manifestly beyond the contemplation of both parties. So the debtor and creditor, they did not, um, they did not uh, anticipate this kind of uh, hardship or difficulty at the time that they, uh, they entered into the contract. So um, yung difficulty could not possibly, could not have been possibly anticipated or foreseen. Never yung naisip na mangyayari yun, as in never. So, what else? One of the parties must ask for relief. That is the second requisite. So, here, let us say the debtor asks for relief. Uh, nagpunta siya sa uh, court para ma-release siya dun sa obligation. So, remember here also that the last requisite is the object must be a future service with future unusual change in condition. So, remember here, yung unusual change in condition is that bigla nagsarado lahat ng daan. So, hindi talaga makapasok. It takes three months or more, maybe more. Siguro sabihin na lang natin more. Tapos, hindi talaga siya makapunta sa Baguio, hindi niya ma-perform yung uh, service. So, remember here, class, uh, uh, dahil nagkaroon na nga ng danger, hindi na siya makapunta doon. Uh, danger to life, yan, sabi na natin. So, yung uh, debtor will be excused from the uh, obligation. So, here, there is no uh, obligation to pay for uh, damages. Yun ang pandaan dyan. So, please take note of um, yung doctrine ng Rebus 6 Tantibus. Um, treaty or agreement will remain valid only if the same conditions prevailing at the time of contracting continue to exist at the time of performance. Remember class, the condition in at the time of contracting in our example is that 
that or is uh, free to go to Baguio, very easy to go to Baguio. Just uh, ride your private vehicle or just take the bus. Very easy to go to Baguio. Uh, so yun ang condition at the time of contracting. But remember, at the time of performance, the condition is nung pipintura na siya, bigla uh, ang condition is that hindi na madaanan ang uh, three major roads ng uh, papunta sa Baguio. So remember, um, here, the treaty or agreement is no longer valid and the debtor, because of moral impossibility or impracticability, may be released from the obligation without paying for damages. Because remember, uh, hindi natin ma-apply yung uh, doctrine ng uh, Rebus Sixtantibus. Kasi remember, sa Rebus Sixtantibus, yung agreement or treaty is valid only if yung conditions prevailing at this time of contracting is the same at the time of performance. Here, in our example, different. So, yun ang tingnan natin sa moral uh, impossibility or impracticability. Other rules regarding loss, um, uh, in case of um, uh, loss, uh, when uh, effect of a fortuitous event where the obligation uh, proceeds from a criminal offense. So remember here, obligation will uh, subsist except uh, when the creditor refuses to accept the claim. I have already discussed this. Apat na beses ko na yata i-discuss to kasi kaka-discuss ko lang ito kanina, no? Obligation arises from a crime. So remember, if the carabao, again, is lost by a fortuitous event, the debtor slash criminal is still liable to deliver it. Yung, not anymore the carabao, obviously, because it is lost by a fortuitous event, but the monetary value. What is the exception to this? I already discussed this. In case uh, the creditor or the victim or yung pinagnakawan, property owner is in mora uh, asipiendi. So, ito na, binibigay mo na yung kalabaw, binabalik mo na, but the creditor refuses to accept it uh, without justification, uh, even if it has been offered to, uh, to him. Remember class, um, if the object is lost by a fortuitous event, a uh, creditor, a uh, debtor is no longer liable. As long as the debtor also must exercise due diligence, hindi naman ang salami talaga. So, ito na, binabalik na yung kalabaw, hindi pa tinanggap ng uh, creditor, nang walang justifiable reason, debtor is no longer liable if the carabao is lost by a fortuitous event. Because the creditor here is in, uh, remember, mora asipiendi or uh, legal uh, delay or default on the part of the creditor. What else? A uh, right of creditors to proceed against a third person. So this is the last provision. So remember, a creditor is given the right to proceed against a third person responsible for uh, the loss. So, uh, debtor is supposed to deliver a carabao, tapos pinatay ni X yung carabao, who is a third person. X, X is third person at the carabao. So, X is the, sa bagay, except that the carabao is not a person. But, uh, remember, he is not a party to the transaction. So, anyway, um, debtor is supposed to deliver a carabao to a creditor. Uh, in the meantime, the carabao is destroyed by a third person, X. So, remember here, plus the, the loss here is not through the fault of the debtor. Dapat excuse na yan, di ba? But uh, of course, the creditor can uh, proceed against the third person responsible for the loss. In this case, uh, creditor can proceed against uh, X. There is no need for the debtor to assign his right to the creditor. So the right of action of the debtor is transferred uh, to the creditor from the moment the obligation is extinguished by operation of so, yun ang tandaan natin pagdating sa Article 1269. Uh, so, anyway, that is the last provision for this uh, section. Um, please, class, uh, stand by for uh, Section 3, um, Condemnation or Remission of uh, Debt. Thank you, class, and good afternoon.